Hey y'all, so today I'm gonna be showing you how I create classroom and morning slide templates. Um, I created a bunch of these yesterday just as I was sitting around trying to find something to do and I posted them on Instagram and a lot of you guys asked how I made them and wanted a tutorial. So I put that in here. I had y'all vote on my Instagram, which ones you would like to see and y'all picked five. And so I showed all those in this video. So subscribe to see more videos. Follow me on Instagram and just stay tuned to see how I make my classroom and morning slides. Okay, so we're going to be making five of these today. I'm going to show you how I make five of them. So this is the one we're going to start with. And I'm just going to have two desktops up. And so I'll have like a blank presentation. And then I'll have this one. So I'll keep checking back and forth to make sure it looks as similar as possible. So the first thing I do is just open up a blank PowerPoint. I made these all in PowerPoint and then when I use them, I will go in and I will type in like on to do or reminders or just anything that I need for that day. And then I'll screenshot it and put it into a Google Doc or a Google slide. And I will keep that Google slide presentation running for the entire year so I can see what slides I've used recently so I can switch it up and not use the same thing every day. So the first thing that I'm going to start with is the font. So I always delete these boxes and just get my own text box and just draw it. So we're going to start with good. I use a lot of Amy Grosbeck's fonts. I will link down below the ones that I use the most. But for this one, we're going to do AG How Do You Survive? So it just looks like this. I just make it bigger and then I fit the text box to it. So I'm going to take the little tool up here and turn it to the sideway or turn it sideways and just put it up in this corner for good. And then as you saw, it has a shadow behind it. So I'm just going to take it, command C for copy, command V for paste. I'm going to bring it out here, command A to select all. I'm going to go up here and just pick a random blue. I think I'll use just the lightest shade of blue that's up here that it gives you. And so if I just put it back like this, it's going to be over the text since I made it second. And so if you double click on the border of the text box and go to send to back, you can either send backwards if there was multiple things and I just wanted to send this behind one layer, I would hit send backwards. But because I just want to send it all the way to the back, I'm going to hit send to back. So now it's going to put it behind good. So I'll line it up with good and then use my arrow keys and just kind of get it how I want it. I bring it down and bring it to the right a little bit without making it too crazy. So that looks about good to me. And so next is morning. Instead of drawing a text box, you could also just double click and it'll put a text box in. And so that last font, it didn't matter if I was uppercase or lowercase because no matter what, it's going to be, it's going to look like that. But this next font I'm using, it does matter. So I'm going to put the caps lock on, type in morning, select it all and go up here and do AG the mothership, which is a new font I just got and I really like. So I'm just going to make it big, bring it over here, kind of line it up to where I want it. You can line it up with those lines or you can also use the arrows. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, command C, command V. And come up here and change this to the same blue color. And same thing if I just put it there and go on top. So I need to double click on the, or two finger click, not double click. Two finger click on the border of the text box and hit send to back. And line it up how I want it. So there's good morning. And so I just started making these slides this morning and I had no idea how to make a post-it note looking thing. And so I figured it out. It might not be the best way to make it, but I'll show y'all how I make it. So I'm gonna get the square and just click and it makes a square. If you double click, not two finger click, but double click on the sides of it, it'll bring up this format. And so I go to this little button over here and hit that and hit size and I'm just gonna make it four by four. And so it makes a little square. And then I can X out of that. Um, I'm gonna make this post a note white. So for shape format, I'm going to go up here and hit shape fill, make it white, make the outline of it black 
and change the weight just to a little bit thicker, like two and a fourth. So it looks like that. Maybe that's a little too thick. I'll bring it down a little bit. One and a half. Perfect. And so I want to make the effect look like the post-it note is folded up at the bottom. And so like I said, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but this is what I did. So I went to shapes and I got a triangle and I just kind of drew a random triangle. And I'm going to get it and turn it and get it to fit right here. So this triangle is a little wonky, but it doesn't matter if it's completely perfect because this is what we're using to cover up the part of the post-it note that we want to look like it's folded back. So after you think it's okay, you're going to go and change the fill to white and change the line to white. And so now that part of your post-it note is gone like that. And so then I'm going to get another triangle and just kind of estimate-ish. And I want it to be light gray in the middle because I want it to look like the post-it notes folded back, obviously, and the black line's fine. And so then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to try and fit it in over here somewhere. So that might have been a little too big, but I can just take this and move it up to where I want it and see the bottom of that post-it note started peeking out. So you could just take this and make it bigger. I'm just using that as something to cover up the part of the post-it note I want to look like is not there. So there's your post-it note. And then I just click one, hit, hold down shift, and then click the three of those things, and then two finger click and hit group. So that now I can move it around, I can change the colors, and it's still a group. So there's that post-it note, and then I put to do up top. So same thing, just double click to do. Doesn't matter if it's caps or not caps because I use the same AG How Do You Survive, which makes everything look the same. And then just put that up there. Um, so next, I will show you how to do the other post-it note. It's super easy to change the colors of it once you have one of them. And this looks a little too big, so I'll just make it a little smaller. So I'm again, Command C, Command V. I'm gonna bring it up here. And so even though it's grouped, you can still select the individual images. So see when I click in the middle of the square, it brings up the selection tools around the square. So I can click shape format again and go into shape fill and fill it with that first color. And so now that is gray and we don't want the corner to be gray because it doesn't look like it's that post-it note folded up. And so since I selected that lightest blue color. I'm just going to select the second one since it's a little bit darker and it makes a post-it note like that. And then this one is reminders and another, I like this font as I've been using it a lot, AG How Do You Survive, but another font I like is AG My Kid Will Talk to a Sandwich. That's a new one I've gotten so I'll just use this one here. And if for some reason when you made this and you tried to drag it over here, it wasn't showing up like it went behind, you can just two finger cl click again on the outline and then bring to front. So there's that. And next I'll show you how to make this bottom part and then we'll do the Bitmoji. So the bottom part is super easy. I just got a shape, got a rectangle, click and drag it all the way down. And I'm gonna fill it with that same light blue color that I've been using for both of those fonts and for that post-it note. So just this top one. And I start out with this font and it's gonna be outlined. So I'm just gonna double click. Today is dot, dot, dot. Since it's gonna be outlined, you wanna double click on the perimeter of the text box, go to text options. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the font. I'm gonna do AG the mothership again, make it big. So text fill is gonna stay or it's gonna change to white. So when you change it to white like that, it changes the whole thing, but you wanna go down here to text outline, hit solid line and change it to black. So now you've got outline font and you can just drag it down here. And I like how PowerPoint has these guidelines and it will tell you when you're in the middle like that. And so then I'm gonna do this font. And so let's just, I'll just pretend it's today. 
So now I want to take, so I take my caps lock off Tuesday, March 31st, 2020 or 3, 31, 20. And so the font I use for this is AG, another Amy Grosbeck font, AG, can you not? And so then I just make that big and drop it in. So that's your date. And last thing is the Bitmoji, which is the most fun part. So if y'all open up Google Chrome, you could just Google, uh, Google Chrome Bitmoji. And then you could get either one of these. Um, I just got the Bitmoji Chrome extension and then Let's see if we click the first one. Yeah. And then you, it'll be like add to Chrome. And so when you add to Chrome, it'll come up with your little Bitmoji um, thing. And so I don't know what I typed for that. Let's see if I type rainbow, if it'll come up. Yes. Yeah, so if you click on it, it'll give you a message that says right click and choose copy image from the menu. So on Max, if you just press down two fingers, and you could click copy image and then go back to your PowerPoint, command V, and there's your Bitmoji. So you can use all of your Bitmojis and all of your slides. They're just up here. And I mean, you know, there's tons of Bitmojis and you can also search certain things. So that is the first slide. I think it came out pretty similar. I wanted to show you all that different font. So I didn't use the same font as before. So that is our first one. And so I just click new slide to make our second one and then erase those. That's my number one tip. Don't ever use the text box and things that it provides. Just go ahead and erase them so you can have a clean slate. So this is the next one we're gonna make and I think you'll probably already know how to make it based on what I showed you on the last one. But let's just go back. I'm gonna copy this post-it note from our last one since I already showed y'all how to make it so I don't have to make it again and then for this one we have two colored bars at the top and the bottom and so go into shapes again get your rectangle and then it's up to you how thick or how thin they are and so once you make one you're going to want to go in and pick your color I was playing around with colors today because I found like I like this light pink but I wanted something a little darker so I went to this color wheel and then I just kind of played around with it and then drug this to make it like a little bit darker. So that's good. And you'll see it automatically puts um, borders on this. So I'm just going to make sure that those are black because sometimes they can come up as blue. And I don't mind that it has borders, but you can do whatever you want. Um, and so now I'm just going to center that and then copy and paste it and put it at the bottom. For the text on this sticky note, I just wrote good morning and I put it again in that AG, my kid will talk to a sandwich, but then I went up here. This is like a little text spacing option and I made it loose. So that just kind of spaces your text out a little bit if that's something you want to do. And then you could use the guidelines and just put it in the middle. So for the quote up here, I did this in two different parts. So I started with just double click, let's have an, and then I did day. I left a space for awesome because I want it tilted a little bit and I didn't want to include it in the same text box. So I'm going to go up here and use AG the mothership again and then just make it big. And I knew I wanted that space so I just did a tab. And then you can always adjust it when you put the font in to see if it's what you want or not. And so for this one, you see how it has a shadow behind it. So I'm just going to keep the one I have as a as the black copy, as the shadow that's going to be behind it. And then I'm going to make a copy of this. And this is when we're going to go back in. If you double click on this, it'll bring up your formatting options. Go to text options, the solid fill is going to be white, and the solid line, it comes up with black, and then you can make it as thick or as thin as you want it. You can make it dashed, just you've got lots of options. So this is going to be the top part. So I just kind of put it up there, and then I scoot it around 
like that. That looks good to me. And then awesome is going to be again in that AG How Do You Survive font. Make it white. Make it a little bigger. And then when I bring it up here, you can just tilt it however you want. Just made it a little tilted just for something fun. Um, so yeah, like that. And then the bottom is basically the same as what I did on this slide, except let's see, I'm just going to copy this over since I already showed you. Um, except I had a black layer behind it just to give it some dimension. So see it's on top. I'm going to two finger click on the outside. Sometimes I need to bring it out here cause there's too many shapes and then just send it to the back. Bring it back. See, it went all the way behind the rectangle because I said send it to the back. So then if you want to bring it, if I hit bring to front, then it's going to be right behind or right in front of that. But I do command Z to undo that. If I hit bring forward, it just brings it forward for that one layer. Well, it was supposed to. So now let's do it this way. If you two finger click and hit send backward, See, it's just going to send it behind that one layer and not send it behind both of the layers. So just line it up and then use your arrows however you want to do that. And then this is just the same font as before, just in white. So I'm going to copy that over and make it white. So that is our second one. I like this because you can put like an inspirational quote at the top or just like a little saying that you want to represent your day. And then you could of course format it however you want. You could put good morning, like a little morning message, and then you can make like a to-do section or reminders or just however you want to format it. I'm not sure how I will format mine once they're in my classroom, which is why I'm just kind of making them like a skeleton right now. So when it comes to time, I can just go in and type the things I need really quickly without having to design it from scratch. And then I can insert it into my Google Slides. Okay, this is the next one we're making. And so I know it looks a little funny because the shape goes off the page, but if you just do slide sl slideshow and play from current slide, you can't even tell. So we are going to go make this one. So let's make a new slide. And then first thing I always do is just delete those. We're going to start with our good morning at the top. And so double click, make sure you're all caps. Good morning. I'm going to use that font. I love again, AG the mothership. And I'm just going to make it like as big as possible to cover the top of the slide. So so about 96 and this one I'm going to make each letter a different color but they're still going to have that black outline so I'm going to double click on the side to bring up the format shape text options and then text fill so I'm going to highlight each letter individually and choose what text fill I want so I'm going to start off with just the colors that it gives me down here and so just red, and then you could click the right arrow, hold down shift, and then click the right arrow again. And then just go through orange, yellow, and then I just go in the order it gives me. So this light green, dark green, light blue, dark blue, and then I skip the navy, and then just go to the purple, and then go again. So red, orange and yellow. So now that they all have their text fill, you can highlight it all and hit solid line for the outline and then it comes up with black and then on this side I made it a little thicker. So about two point font and see how these letters look a little faded and I didn't like how like bright they were. So this is my trick. I inserted a rectangle, put it all the way over that, and I made it have no outline, and I made it white. And then in shape options, when you double click on the side of the shape, I came to transparency, and I made it about 50. So, you could also just type in 50. So, that's what gives you that little faded look, so it's not as bright. Um, but, yes, and so then... Happy first day of school. 
And then that's the same AG How Do You Survive font, that same cursive font I've been using. I just really like this one. Just make it bigger and then just pop it wherever you want. And so next for the to-dos. The to-dos is really simple, even though it might look like it's not. I click the circle and to make a perfect circle, you want to hold down shift while you are drawing it. So I hold down shift and just make a circle and then go up here. I want it to have no fill because I want it to be clear, but I want it to have a black outline. And you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. And then I bring it over here, copy and paste it. And then it just kind of ends up like that. And I think that looks fine. And so it just kind of gives the illusion of just like a doodled circle almost. And then to do, I'm going to go back and use that AG My Kid Will Talk to a Sandwich. You'll see I'm just using these four fonts, which I'll have all linked down below. They come in packages with about 10 fonts, but um, they're about $6 and they're so worth it. They make everything look so cute. So I think those might be from two or three different packs. Um, and then put that up there. So that's your to-do. I used a different font in this one, but that was still AG the Mothership. And you can make the lines on this as thick or as thin as you want. So it's just the width. And yeah. And then lastly for the Bitmoji, this one says Happy Friday. This one says Happy First Day of School, which is why I just typed Happy First Day of School on this one. And for the Bitmoji, I think I used, I typed in Yay. I don't even remember what I typed in. Yeah, there it is. So two finger click, copy image, go back to PowerPoint, paste it, and then you can make it as big or as little as you want. And that is our third slide. Okay, so this is slide number four we're making. And this one I made really quickly. Well, not really quickly. I just kind of made it without any thinking. And so as I'm making this, I'm going to have to refer back to this. Um, so to start off, same good as the first slide, but I will just make it again. So good. And same AG How Do You Survive font, make it big, turn it just a little, and put it in the corner. So for morning, we're going to use that My Kid Will Talk To A Sandwich font and make it big. And kind of the same thing as this one, we're going to choose a different color for each letter. So I don't think I can probably get those exact colors that I use, but we're going to try. So double click on the side to bring up your text options, text fill, solid fill. So let's highlight our first one and go. So we'll use that pink. Let's see what else we can find. I have a couple saved, so just a purple ish pink that's definitely pink I don't know why I said purple um we can use this purple that's down here and then I had an orange in there and so let's just use yeah that orange is good um I had a yellow we'll just use that yellow and then I'll start back over again so the light pink and then that more hot pink um okay select it all do a solid line and there you go. And so you can see that this one was, is a little faded like the one I just made. And that's because I did the thing again where I put the square over it. Um, did the solid fill of white and no line. And then brought the transparency to 50. So it just makes it a little like muted colors if you're looking for more pastels. Okay, so for reminders, I went up here to shapes. They give you a text box if you scroll down. And so I held down shift as I was making this one. And then I just made sure I had no fill and a black line. And this was kind of tricky to do. So I copied it and pasted it. And then I went in here and did dash type and I think I did dots or I did dashes like that and then I just kind of made it a little bigger and tried to fit it around here as close as possible so it's a little too big 
So kind of just like mess around with it and it doesn't have to be perfect, but just kind of like that. This one doesn't look as good as that did, but you get the idea. Then the reminders font is the same as morning. And then you can just keep it straight, turn it, whatever. And then quote of the day is same as the circle I drew in the last one, except I didn't hold down shift. And so I just kind of made it a little bit of an oval, but almost a circle. And so no fill, solid line. And then if you copy and paste it again, you can just play around with it to make it kind of messy. And then for these quotation marks, I just made my own text box, did a quotation mark and put it in that AG. My kid can talk to a sandwich font and made it super big. And put that part up there. And then what I did is I copied and pasted it, brought it down here and used this to just completely turn it around and put it down there. And then you can just type quote of the day in the same font and then that today is, is that exact same thing from their first slide, just without the dots. So today is, and then you can write the date down there. So that is that slide. The reminders is obviously bigger in this one. You can just make it whatever size you want. And now for our last slide, the one that took me longest to do is this one. So we're going to start out same as we do with the last ones with the top. Happy. Same font we've been using. I only use these four fonts in all of these, which those are my absolute favorite ones that I use all the time. Friday is going to be in the mothership. Make it super big. And I put it next to happy, kind of towards the top. And so for this one, I have ombre blue letters. And so when I go in text options, I just used like the natural progression of blue that it gives you right here. I think that's the easiest if you're trying to do ombre letters. So F R I, and I'm going to run out if I do F R I D A Y. And so I actually did both of these letters, the same color, which I don't think really matters. You can also incorporate the blue that is in the top, like this blue, but I just didn't think about that when I was making it. And so Friday, just like that, it gives you a nice ombre, and then you want a line. Oh, I see I accidentally clicked on the text box instead of going to text options, and then there's your line. And you want to make sure it is black like that. And so then for these dots, these dots, I just clicked shapes and held down the shift key to make a perfect square and then just copied and pasted them and put them in a line, use those guidelines. Mm, not that far away. And then just kept going. So once I got three in a line evenly spaced, I grouped them together then copied and pasted again to help just make it easier. And then again, and I made 12 of these, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So since I used one, two, three, four, five colors, but there are six letters because I reused that color, I wanted to have two dots per color. And those aren't exactly straight, but you get the idea. So then I grouped them them up here oh that's really not straight oh that's my bad oh well and then since you can click the individual ones I just made every two the same color so go through and make every two the same color except for these four are all this color and so I just held down shift as I was selecting them and you'll see that they all have lines around them, which are blue and I want black. So 
So you just go in here and make sure your line is black and you can make it a little thicker, however thick you want. And then those are your lines. And then for today is, it's another one of those things where the shape runs off of the slide, but when it's in presentation mode, you can't tell. And so I just did a circle again, held down shift. So it was a perfect circle. Just kind of estimated how big I wanted it. Made it black. Sometimes I just make the outline the same color. Or sometimes I just hit no line. It really doesn't matter. Put that up there. And then did another today is. Made it bigger. Made it white. So you can just put that up there. And then let's just pretend it's today. Make that as big or as small as you want it and just pay attention to where the slide is when you're making these so you don't accidentally put it up there where the slide isn't. I haven't figured out how to like crop a shape because the crop is like grayed out or if I try and hit help and crop, it won't let me crop. So if y'all know how to like crop a shape like that, let me know. And so next we will make our quote of the day box. And so I think y'all know how to do those um, quotations since they were in the other one, but I just did quote and I put of the day in the second line. I wanted to make quote centered with those two. My kid will talk to a sandwich, make it a little bigger and just tilt it just a little bit. And then I brought in a rectangle and my voice level thing ended up going over here. I I had this to the end at first, but I'm just going to make it about this big since my voice level thing is going to go all the way up. You can make it thicker. I don't usually leave this open, but it's actually really helping me right now. So just position that wherever you want. And then I just went back and copied these big quotation marks, but you can just, you can pick any font for your quotation mark. Um... Just make them big, copy and paste it, turn it around, and you'll see with this thing, once it gets to 180, that means it's completely turned around, and then just position them wherever you want in the box. Okay, and then for to do, that's just a simple square held down shift to make a square and then made it no fill but a black line and then made it just a little bit thicker and then just wrote to do um next these supplies so i just typed in google to find these supplies it really wasn't that hard I thought it was gonna be a lot harder. So like, let's start off with glue. So I just typed in glue cartoon and just kind of looked around to find a cute one. Sometimes you'll have to have to type in glue cartoon, glue clip art, glue doodle, but I couldn't find any when I typed in glue cartoon, but then I saw that glue up there for glue clip art. So then I clicked on that and I don't even know where it went. Uh, let's try glue clip art. There's the glue. So, two finger click, copy image, and then paste. And sometimes, here's a trick. If you want things to have a clear background, go up to picture format and go over here to remove background. And then you can mark areas to keep. So like, you just mark on the ones you want to keep so they don't turn purple and then you just click keep changes so now it's got a clear background and you can just move it around however you would like and so next i did a composition notebook so like i said i either do cartoon or clip art so i think i did cartoon for this one um yeah and it was this first one and so copied it brought it into PowerPoint. 
See, they trick you sometimes. They make you think it has a transparent background when it just is actually those squares. So I had to go back here and remove the background again, but when I clicked that, it marked all of that to get rid of. And so this kind of took a little bit longer, but I clicked mark areas to keep and I'm just like drawing on as much of it as possible. And so see, it took that part. So now we gotta go up here and just try and get all the areas you want to stay. And so that's almost it. It's still purple over here. There we go. And then keep changes. Just make it however small or big you want. And I'm gonna turn it this way since the glue is turned the other way. And I did scissors, cartoon, and got the scissors image. Pasted it. That one had that on it, and so I did go up here and crop it try and crop some of the white out in that black thing and then I did the remove background again so it had these purple areas as areas to remove so I just went back in and tried to mark them as areas to keep and good and you can just resize them put it wherever and then lastly, I think I did, yeah, a pencil. So I had a hard time finding a pencil that I liked. But I think, did I use this one? No. Which one? Oh, I clicked on that one to use and then I saw this one underneath it. So brought that back. Same thing. Move the background and it was just trying to get rid of part of this eraser part. And so that's good. And then just put it wherever you want. And so the last thing is this voice level thing, which I might have made this harder than it needed to be. So let's see if I can do it again. So I'm gonna zoom in just so I can get them all lined up on each other. So first I'm gonna start with this shape, it's like a square, but it's got rounded edges. Hold down my shift so it's a perfect square and just put it up there. And I know I want it to be black. So that's going to be the title of our voice level. And so put that up there. And now I'm just going to make one, two, three, four, five squares. And I just need the voice level title to just be like poking out at the top. And so I'm going to make one square. And then I'm just going to copy and paste it all the way down. And this is the part where you have to zoom in because you have to see if they're like lining up next to each other. So yeah, those are lining up. So I'll just select them and paste. Since I need five. And see, I'm running out of room. So what I need to do is go back and make it a little bit smaller. Then I can bring it down just a little bit. So let's try this again. Okay, there we go. And I'm just gonna copy this last one. So it can go to the bottom, it doesn't really matter, or I can just select them all and bring them up just a little bit. There. And so now I need to make my colors, and so I'll select them individually. I just did bright colors, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna do these that are up here. So red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Not the cutest, but just for time's sake. And then I want them all to have a border on them. So I'm just going to hit solid line and make this black and just bring it up a bit. So that's that. And then just to do text, I'm going to change it. My kid will talk to a sandwich, make it a little smaller, and then just bring it up. And so for this one, the number is a lot bigger than the word. So I just did zero, silent. I went up here and made sure that the zero was going to be centered. I changed the font, and I just selected the zero and made it bigger. 
and then selected silent and made it a little smaller and then made all of it white and then just put it over and then I just copied and pasted that and brought it out and then one is whisper can't even see what I'm typing oh no let's bring it up here okay one is whisper and this yellow isn't going to be easy to see so I'm going to I don't know why I keep wanting to click that I'm just going to make this one purple I know it doesn't go in order but we're just going to make it purple and so make it two partner three's group and four is outside So there's that and then for the little arrow I just looked up arrow doodle and there's actually a lot of cute options I just wanted, wanted something simple so is this the one I used yeah because this one had a transparent background so copy paste made it smaller drag it over here and like that so that is our final slide and so I hope these were helpful for you guys I wish I would have seen a video like this before to know how to do it if you have any helpful hints for me like how to make the post-it notes easier definitely let me know I mean I already have them made now I have a couple other slides I've made that I'll just go through and show y'all but I think with what I have shown you it would be easy for you to make these um so yeah and then for this one I just if it's someone's birthday I want to put like happy birthday and then their name in there so yeah those are all of the slides that I have uh comment below and let me know if this was helpful for y'all if you make these and post them on your Instagram or your Instagram story I would love to see especially if you're using them for your students but that is all so thank y'all for watching be sure you follow me on Instagram because I posted these and did a poll to see which ones y'all would like to see me make. And I have some tutorials on my stories, but I knew this was going to be long. So I made sure to put the tutorial on my YouTube. But yeah, be sure y'all follow me and subscribe down below because I have an exciting announcement coming if I haven't already announced it about what I'll be doing next year. And that will have a lot of videos that come along with it. So yeah, I will see y'all in my next video.